Merry Christmas! This is uh, the last uh, video for me for this year, episode 15. Um, I think I managed to keep up a good pace and I hope you've enjoyed this year's um, week weekly weekly videos. Uh, do um, tell me what you think. Uh, last week I just ran through the first half of 2014 and just summed up a couple of things that happened. And I wanted to continue for, uh, with the remainder of the 2014. And I have this little extra video about showing just how it looks actually behind the camera on my screen is basically what my workspace looks like. And I'll just cram it together and I'll probably run that uh, uh, after this little talk of mine. So uh, hang around until after I say goodbye basically and then I ran that little snippet. Uh, well, I started uh, this year, of course, yeah, I started this year working for Mozilla. Since then, I've been working for Mozilla the entire year. But in July, we released curl 7.37.1. Uh, um, I, um, yeah, just not a notch kind of along the way. I, I did a kind of a uh, call out asking for people to put some care and love into the CMake build system, or we would um, stop caring for it at all, uh, which, uh, which actually really brought results. And we got a couple of people involved that really care and want uh, CMake build. Uh, be, um, they want to be able to build curl and libcurl with CMake. So they provided a lot, a, a long range of fixes and really improved the CMake build for, for curl and libcurl. So yeah, that turned out really good, I think. Um, and yeah, in July, we also kind of, uh, that, that was, uh, I think the first release when we really had our proper um, what I mentioned, what I mentioned before, we started er, uh, in January this year to to change all the random stuff in curl to use the proper backend crypto random functions to get uh, solid good random. Uh, that kind of really was uh, finalized or shipped in that release. So since then, we have really strong solid random for everything. Uh, then in back uh, over in September, we released another release, seven thirty eight point zero, and we did another two security advisories about cookie leaks, uh, slightly related, um, I mean, the vulnerabilities, they were uh, one of those, one one were that we used the IP address wrongly and kind of consider it as a hierarchical, hierarchical um, match, like you would with a name, but IP addresses don't work the same way. So that was stupid and, and bad. And we had another thing where we, we stopped treating uh, top-level domains uh, in a special way. So you could set cookies for a top-level domain, uh, which, which you are not supposed to be uh, able to. Yeah. And yeah, I had this uh, lovely criticism on that SecT conference in September. I wrote a, a blog post about it. I don't want to repeat it now. Uh, in uh, October, I managed to reach the zero uh, um, defects in Coverity. You know, Coverity runs this uh, um, service where you can scan your open source project for free with their uh, kind of awesome um, static analyzer tools that analyzes the, the, they analyze the source code to check for, for bad stuff in the code. So we, we hit zero there. I mean, that's just a temporary thing. Of course, we will introduce new things that we will kind of work with and uh, Continue. Mm, the camera is not really playing games with me. Uh, okay, <laughs> never mind. It'll be whatever. Uh, yeah, that was October. And in October, of course, also the Poodle attack hit. And um, everyone got all up in arms about Poodle and SSL v3. And uh, I claim that curl is not vulnerable to Poodle because Poodle requires blah, blah, blah. I wrote a blog post about that too. It's not exactly. Um, non-controversial because some people say I shouldn't say that because that makes blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, we're getting rid of SSL v3 as a default in general. And and um, I mean, not then not, not only v, we as in uh, in the curl project, I think we as in a business and, and everyone is kind of trying to get rid of SSL v3. And of course, just recently, they discovered that a lot of um, implementations of TLS also are vulnerable to Poodle because they kind of inherited uh, SSL v3 
logic and code in their TLS stacks, so they have the same problem there. But it is going to be worked out, and the problem is, of course, always in those embedded things that you never update or just those who just lag behind a lot. Nothing new about that. Uh, right, so in November, we released 7.39.0. Uh, where we had uh, yet another security advisory about the dup handle problem. When we did, uh, when you know, when you use libcurl, you can create a handle to do the transfers with, and you can duplicate that handle with the curl easy dup handle. And there was a vulnerability in that. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, worth mentioning that November 2014, the highest commit number in the curl project for slightly over 10 years, 240 commits within a single month from, I believe we had 20 committers or 20 authors of patches uh, in, in, during, during that single month, which is, is great. Uh, I mean, it's not that we kind of, I don't think it's, uh, we're not ramping up really, but we're seeing that we're maintaining a rather high pace of development, high in relative terms, high in curl terms. And I would say that it is, I mean, we're only a handful of guys that are actually doing the commits and doing the mergers. So 240, that's a decent amount. I think we're going to be, be close to that in, in more month, but um, yeah, working good. And we're also having um, basically the same pace on the mailing lists and everything. Um, I, I did a count and I saw that we've, during the year 2014, we were so far had over 4,500 emails on the current mailing lists, which isn't, isn't a lot, is it not? So, so I did a check and we're basically on the same level as the five last years or so. We're around 4,500 up to 5,000 emails per year on the mailing lists. So, so um, I would say an average year in, in, in email traffic, I would say that we're uh, with 1,674 commits during the entire year so far. We're probably above our average. Uh, we have, since the, the first release this year, 7.35.0, I counted just how many names um, of contributors are mentioned in the, in the Git commits. And we have 121 unique names mentioned, which I think is fairly good during a single year. So awesome. And... Um, Less awesome, or is it awesome? I don't know. We have had eight announced security vulnerabilities this year, which pretty much has to be a record for a single year because we've had 29 in total and eight during a single year has to be outstandingly uh, many. But I don't know. It's good that people are paying attention. They are actually uh, digging, they are reporting, and we are fixing. So in general, I think it's good. It means that we, we improve. We're much better now than we were a year ago. So, and we did six releases, which is pretty much exactly what we're uh, aiming for. We're doing a release every eight weeks, which is two months. So that means six releases. And uh, speaking of releases, then we're, um, I've been saying we should have, a, uh, or that we will have a release. The 7.40.0 should be on December 29th, 2014. But I think we are going to push that forward a week and a little more into 2015 instead so that people will be more prepared and will be around. I think, um, or I got the excellent advice from someone near, uh, and, uh, near the project and uh, that releasing a, a release in on December 29 in, in the middle of the holidays in a lot of places will put a uh, put people in bad places and it'll be put an extra effort into, I mean, especially since we're going to release a security advisory in this release, we probably, uh, I mean, people will appreciate that, that they don't have to do that in the middle of the holiday. So we'll push the release, I think we'll push the release into January 8th, 2015 instead, which then also kind of, fits me better because I'm, I'm around uh, traveling in, in early January there. So yeah, 
January 8th. I haven't really emailed anyone about this yet, and we haven't really, really decided it yet, but uh, I think so. So that's how we're going to start 2015. 7.40.0. Yep, and another security vulnerability announcement, and we are going forward in that style. Uh, I hope we get some um, stapling code. The OSCP, online certificate, OCSP stapling, uh, done soon. We have a lot of other interesting development in, on the mailing list. I, I, I can repeat all those things I've said for several months now that I want to do that I haven't done. Uh, and of course, uh, I want to do the LibSSH2 release. Uh, we have some issues with that, um, possible uh, security problems, but we're working those out and we're trying to uh, not rush into a release then because maybe we need to do some more fixes and possibly some more other things before we release. Um, and in the Firefox, um, I'm still fighting with this bug. Um, well, I'm not still fighting. I'm, I'm going back and forth, and I'm I got back to it now. The I said the network changes, and the network changes on on Linux and Firefox OS, which is a, a kind of a big bug that we want to have fixed because it's annoying even to Linux users when you change the network, like you switch Wi-Fi networks or you close your laptop and you open it up in another place, and it has changed network, and it doesn't really respond greatly to the new conditions. But there's a little bug that uh, is actually not in my code. It's actually in the, in the emulator that is causing some tests to fail. That is causing my patch to not be good or considered good. So we'll see. I'm fighting with it. And otherwise, I'm going to work with online, offline detection you know, going forward. I mean, how um, how actually JavaScript and everything considers uh, uh, is being told if we're online or offline. What does it mean? I mean, it's kind of interesting, I think, that in 2014 and 2015, we still don't have any proper good way to actually say what is online. What does online mean? And uh, yeah, everyone will have their own opinion about that, depending on which level of uh, interest, I mean, in the level in the stack, they have their interest on and what they consider online might be. So. I guess in, actually it's a bad word to play with since it's so full of different ideas and, and misunderstandings and different, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll work on that anyway. There's a, a variable called navigator.online that you can read in JavaScript, for example, that tells if the browser is online or not. So I have to use online to some, some aspect, at least the word. Uh, yeah, and <clears throat> that, that's what I'm going to, work on early next year at least. I'll get back to more Firefox stuff, I think, next year and, and clarify. Uh, that's it for now. And I'll show this little uh, video afterwards with uh, just how it looks like where I work for now at the end of December 2014. Uh, I'll be back in next year at some point, probably um, around this uh, January 12 could be a good first video of the year. Happy New Year, everyone. See you next year. Yeah, so here's my work place, workspace. This is my kind of my home office. This is my computer, my screens, and my mess around here. So here's where I where I spend my days. I've, basically, I have two screens. So I have my um, I have my uh, Twitter feed and my email and IRC and stuff. On the left screen. Usually, and I have uh, the, a browser and the uh, Emacs and terminal windows on my right side. Here's my keyboard. Here's the stuff to the right. I got some mess around there. That's my uh, laptop. I run my Windows stuff on. When I have two, I have a virtual machine on it and some other crap and Christmas present stuff. There's my tablet I use for video conferences. Um, always uh, coffee. It's empty now. Need to go and refill. A little Christmas uh, spirit here with a candle for now, at least. And that's my uh, Mac I use for for Mac development when I need to check stuff, uh, Firefox for Mac and so on. 
and there's the screen that is actually connected to the Mac right now. My kids uh, sometimes sit there and play Minecraft on that <laughs> Mac. And there's my old laptop sitting over there, also possible to bring up and, uh, I mean, provide to the kids or whatever. So this is uh, where I spend my days. Yeah, this is the actual computer big thing, and there's the lovely cable mess uh, below the table, then, as it's supposed to be. So here, here I am. There's the stairway down, down to downstairs to the kitchen and everywhere. <coughs> That's about it. This is uh, this is. Oh yeah, I have these uh, ceilings, uh, ceiling windows just above my workplace actually, and today it's actually somewhat light outside the, the, the time is like 9 30 here and it's uh, december 22nd so it's basically the most well almost the darkest day during the year but well there are electrical lights so this is what it looks like in my in my home um, office here's the little volume knob for my analog audio out actually um this is how it looks back to regular scheduling <laughs>